the Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. Adventure of the Ghost Who Talked Too Much. The events and characters depicted in this drama are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. My name in life was Homer Burley. I have a message for my wife. Is she within the hearing of my voice? Homer, my, my dear husband. Have you anything to ask your husband? Homer, dear, are you happy? I would be happier, Myra, if it were not that I'm worried about you. I don't want you to go hungry, to know poverty. But you left me that insurance. It needs wise counsel. Myra, I want you to see... His name, Abbott. Abbott. Then I will not worry. Homer. Homer, are you still there? I I am afraid I have lost contact with him, Mrs. Burley. Oh, there's so much I still wanted to say to him. Call him back. Call him back, Roger. Tonight I am exhausted. Perhaps another time. He gave you one message, though. Abbott. Abbott. I'll see him. A man named Abbott. Mr. Abbott's office. An appointment? Have you met him before? Very well, please come at three tomorrow. Yes, I'll put your name down. Thank you, goodbye. Is Abbott in his office now, young lady? Oh, yes, sir. It is time for his daily reading. Of course, Roger. Please go right in, he's waiting for you. Roger. The time has come, my friend, for a study of your day's horoscope. <laughs> my checkbook, you mean. <laughs> That's it, Abbott. How is business? Going good. Since you moved into that swank headquarters. I had a couple new ones in yesterday and called back their husbands. Women with cash? Of course. I made sure they had dough before I went after them. Good going. I'm branching out some more, Abbott. I'm putting a girl in to do nothing but check on the death notices and adding another woman to the sales force. Sales force? Of course. After I've learned considerable about a certain widow, she has to be sold on the idea of coming to me for an interview and a sitting, doesn't she? <laughs> well, I'll be... <laughs> Roger, you're all right. Furthermore, Abbott, we're not going to be quite so barefaced in taking their cash for wildcat stocks. What do you mean by that? Precisely what I said. 
We're going to run this office of yours more along the lines of a dignified brokerage house and actually make some legitimate investments for some of these people. We can run a lot less risk with the law and still make a big thing of the business. Now, look here, Roger. Suppose you run your crystal-gazing emporium and let me run this investment office. As long as you run it along the lines I consider intelligent, you may run it. Otherwise, I will interfere. But I'm all I right. don't propose to see both of us land in prison, you see. I've done all right so far. And I will see that you continue to do all right. Now, how much have you taken in since yesterday? Mrs. Wilder came in with uh, $5,000 to invest. What did you do with it? Sold to some continental merchant stock. That is utterly worthless. Sure. But she won't know that for a long time. The profit on that deal was two grand. Anything else? That's all. Abbott, you are a fool to try and double-cross me. What do you mean? Do you think I have so many facilities for gathering data without using them for the most important angle of my business? You seem to forget a matter of 500 you took from a woman named Joyce. Moreover, Mrs. Wilder left 10,000 with you, on which my share amounts to 4,000. Who told you I'll that... take the money in cash, Abbott, and don't take such risks. I might decide to find another broker to work with me. You try that and I'll land you in jail. You will land me in jail for what? You're in this racket as deep as I am. That's a matter of proof, my friend. Hey, Casey, here's a funny one for you. What's that, Flicker? Why, if this isn't a Lulu, get a load of this negative. And be careful, it's still wet in the rinsing bath. I shot a picture of this Roger at the Hotel Continental affair this afternoon. Yeah? Well, what about it, Clicker? Well, the doggone negatives are positive, see? That Beluka has such a dark complexion that he shows white on the negative. Now, ain't that something? Who is the bird, anyway, Clicker? Oh, Roger something or other. I didn't cover the story, just took a couple of shots of him. He's the new rage of the society name. What's he do? Look into a crystal or something? Oh, he does all the tricks. Crystal reading, spirit tapping, table tilting. I was talking to a couple of dames over at that meeting... And they claim he brought back the spirit of their dead husband. Ridiculous. Well, I'm just telling you what they told me. Boy, would I like to try to get a photograph of one of those spirits. Good afternoon, Miss Case. Oh, hello, Miss Benny. Oh, hello, Mr. Reed. I didn't know whether you'd be in or not today, Mr. Reed. Well, I usually get in once during the day. I was just showing Miss Case this negative, Mr. Reed. It's that new sensation in the spiritualistic world. Who's that? The Roger. Oh, a couple of the girls were talking about him last evening. I tell you, that guy's a sensation. He's got everybody talking about him. He also has a good press agent. He's hammered at us from the time he first showed up in town. Sent enough stuff in the office here to fill half a dozen of Gunnigan's wastebasket. No wonder I'd never seen any of it. Uh, Gunnigan is allergic to fakers, fakes, and uh, racketeers. And press agents. No wonder the stories on the Roger didn't get by him. He probably thought you might let one of them see print. You suppose this Roger really has something on the ball? He's got just enough on the ball to make himself a fortune. But you know, Mr. Reed, there are no ghosts. I'm surprised that the law doesn't step on a man like that. I don't know why the law should. Well, in the first place, he's obtaining money under false pretenses. Yes, but Mr. Reed, he really does give people some comfort. Don't you think so? Comfort? Maybe there's something to that, Mr. Reed. I hadn't thought of that angle. If it gives a woman comfort to think she's hearing from her departed husband, well, it's surely worth whatever Roger charges. Unless he goes beyond that. What do you mean by that? I've heard of men like that that aren't satisfied with the fees they charge. They suggest investments for people and use that as a means of robbery. Hmm. However, we have a newspaper to run. Uh, look here, Mr. Reed. Yes? I'd give a week's pay for the chance to take some pictures at one of those seances. You'd give a week's pay? Boy, that would be something new. Why not let me sign up for one of his weekly meetings and take along a hidden camera and some flash bulbs? Maybe if the ghost appears, I can get a picture of him. Picture of a ghost? Wouldn't that be something? Miss Benny. Huh? The Daily Sentinel couldn't endorse such an unethical proceeding. That's what I was afraid of. I'll be in my office, Miss Case, if anyone calls. Very well. And, uh, by the way, if someone should happen to already have a good picture of a ghost uh, taken at a seance, uh, I'd be interested in seeing it. We, uh, we might use it for a Sunday magazine picture. Uh-huh. I get it. Look here, Casey. Don't you worry about someone just happening to have that sort of a picture. I'll be around with one inside the next couple of days. Hiya, Clicker. Hey, Click, how's the girl photographer these days? Hi, gang. Hey, Laurie. Huh? This way, fella. I want words with you. Oh, well, what's up? Come on over here where the super snoopers won't get in here full of my plans. I need cooperation, and you're the guy to give it to me. Right here will do. Sit down on the edge of the desk or someplace. i got to make a call. Uh, look through that drawer, will you? For what? See if you can find that small camera of mine, the Leica. Uh-oh. Candid camera shooting, huh? And how. Here's the number. 
Hey, does it ever occur to you that you could clean out this drawer sometimes and make things easier for yourself? Careful you don't break any of those filters. Hey, it's Scott. How do you know what's in here? Well, there's the like it down at the bottom. Now, pull out that photo flash attachment, too. Where are you going? We're going to a spiritualistic seance, Lowry, and get a picture of a ghost. Now, hey, have you gone screwy? Maybe so. Mm, yeah, that's what you want? Oh, that's it. Close the drawer now. I'm going to try to horn in on one of the meetings this Roger has in that new swanky apartment of his. You go out of your way looking for trouble, don't you? Wherever there's trouble, there's a picture, Lowry. And I'd go a long way for a good picture. How much money you got? Money? What's that? Not fooling. Borrow a couple of bucks, will you? I've got to get a couple of flash bulbs and... Say, Lowry, have you got a suit that's pressed? We have to dress up to go there? Well, you have to look civilized. Roger has quality folks at his meetings. Oh, here he is now. Is this the Roger's studio? Well, I'd like to know if it's possible for me to attend one of his meetings. One of the seances, you know. Soft music came from an unseen source in the velvet drape room where Roger held his seance. In the incense-filled atmosphere amid luxurious furniture and silk tapestries, a well-dressed group of people awaited the appearance of the Roger himself. Slightly apart from the rest, sat Clicker Binney, trying to show the same wide-eyed expression of awe the other ladies showed. With her was Ed Lowry. Ooh, Clicker, this place smells bad. Shut up, Mug, that's incense. Yeah, well, I wish we were out of here. Scared? Oh, my eye. Now, get things straight. You keep that reflector with a flash bulb under your coat till the lights are out, and get it set and ready. You've been over all that before. Well, don't muff it. Point the reflector at the ghost, and when I click the shutter, the bulb will go off. And we'll go out on our ears. That's okay by me, as long as we get the picture. The Raja stepped from behind heavy drapery with his head swathed in a turban of royal purple and a gown of similar color came to within a few inches of the floor. His deep-set, heavy-lidded eyes surveyed the people in the room for a minute and then he took his place at the head of a table and motioned wordlessly for the others to gather close to him. As they did so, the lights became dimmer and then the room was dark. In an adjoining room, a man and woman stood with many yards of cheesecloth draped about them. To commune with the spirits that lie beyond the grave, I must ask that all of you remain absolutely silent and concentrate on the hope of seeing one who was dearly beloved by you in life. While you concentrate, I shall place myself in a state of mind that comes close to the borderline beyond which no person once crossing has ever returned in body. In a moment, if conditions and atmosphere are right, it may be possible that the voice of someone who means much to one of you will make itself heard. Then, if absolute silence prevails and nothing happens to disturb the spell, this spirit may come and let itself be seen. If it is recognized by any one of you, please speak softly and address it by name. Time to go out first tonight, Jane. I wonder who's going to call you Danny this time, Greg. That's so loud. Where's the megaphone? I've got to get the old sepulchral spirit in my voice. Right here. Drape this stuff around me now. Get the megaphone up to the wall there and start talking. The Rogers pressed the signal button. Right. Someone is near the borderline calling to me. That sounds like John. I must caution you not to speak out until you see him and recognize him. Someone calls me. I hear a voice. I hear a voice. Who calls me? I feel a presence in this room. Someone from the hereafter is calling for attention. Come, give me your name. My name was John. John. John, will you let us see you? Someone is calling for me. I will let myself be seen. Come, John. A friend of yours is here. I would like to have a word with him. No! Someone took a picture. What in blazes? Who did that? John! John! Where are you? This way. Turn on the lights. What is the meaning of this disturbance? This is profane. This is unheard of. This is the way out. We got it. We got it. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Green Hornet adventure. 
Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. When Britt Reed heard through society friends that Roger, the spiritualist, was using his supposed occult powers to persuade widows to trust their money to his accomplice, he had Clicker Binney get a photograph of the specter at one of the seances. The next day, when Britt Reed came to his office, Ed Lowry was there before him. The girl got a beautiful shot, boss. It shows that fake up to her fairly well. Good enough, Lowry. We can use that photo in a Sunday supplement in a few weeks. I'm planning on a feature story dealing with these racketeers and ghosts. Well, I can contribute. How's that? Well, I can contribute. There have been a lot of cases where women have been told by the crook they thought to be the spirit of their dear departed to go and sink their cash into pony stocks and bonds. Where did you get that? Police headquarters. They've had complaints on Raja. They have? Yeah. All right, son. The other evening, a couple of women were telling me about him. They'd been sent to a man named Abbott. That's the guy. He sold them stocks that weren't worth a hoot. That's what the cops were told. But the law can't prove a thing. I know it. Yeah, perhaps an expose in the Sentinel would do some good. That's what I had in mind, Lowry. Roger will sue if you mention him. Well, let him sue. And it won't get anywhere, boss. That's the tough part of it. He'll fold up and move to another city if things get too tough here. There's no way to get the goods on him, and less chance of linking Abbott up with him. That's yeah, a confounded shame that this sort of thing can go on unchecked. You're telling me? I say the way Rajan and Abbott work the racket, it's almost foolproof. Where's the picture Miss Vinnie took? Here, here, take a look at it. Say, that is something. Isn't that a Lulu? Well, it's a darn shame the cops can't take that as evidence. It wouldn't mean a thing. I know. Roger didn't charge anything for the seance, so the law can't touch him. Hang it all, it's the old story. The law can't touch him. The law couldn't get at Roger and his racket. But Britt had deeper plans when he arranged for the picture to be made. We find him in his apartment with Cato his faithful servant, and the only living man to know him as the Green Hornet. This picture, Cato, shows me how the ghost appears and where he comes from. Yes, Mr. Brett. And by careful study, I can get a fairly good idea of this man's face in spite of the gauze that's draped over his head. Yes, sir. And I think that with that, I can step out at the next seance. What do you want to do? Give the Roger the shock of his life. How? The Green Hornet's going to a seance. The next ghost that Roger summons from behind those drapes is going to have altogether too much to say. Now we've got to make some plans, some rather elaborate plans. Yes. You'll be in on them. He uses a phonograph, Cato, that's probably played from the same back room that the ghosts wait their turn in. What about that? Let me see. Abbott, that's the name of the bird that handles the financial end. Yes, sir. I'm going to give him an invitation to the next seance. I wonder what he'll have to say. (laughs) He won't dare say much in front of the guests. Neither will the Roger. But after, the guests have gone. I wonder. Several evenings later, an exceptionally fashionable group of people were in attendance at the seance. Before the Raja made his appearance, he met his accomplice, Abbott, in the side room. Have you seen all the new people that are here tonight? I wouldn't know the new from the old. We're getting the society trade now, Abbott. People with lots of money. Not so loud. They can't hear me in the next room. What are you going to do here anyway? Sit in. Sort of unusual, isn't it? Any objections? No. No objections, of course. Glad to have you here. 
I just thought I'd see if you weren't trying a little double cross on your own hook. Whatever gave you that idea, Abbott? You've been mighty quick to suspect me. I had sufficient reason to. Okay, Raja. Just don't try anything, that's all. You better go and sit down. I'm going to start in a couple of minutes. Right. <laughs> this should be worth watching, you fake. Greer. Ready for the music? Yes, you may start the recording now. Give them a good show tonight, Greer. Now, Jane. Yes? You're to be the daughter of James Stilwell. He is in the group. Drowned last summer, didn't I? That's right. I have the part memorized. Good. I'll go and start things. I'm going to ask that guy for a reason pay one of these days. Oh, I'm worried about that picture someone took the other night. I haven't heard anything from it. What's there to worry about? I don't know, Greer, but just the same. Keep still. They can't hear it. <gasps> Who? That mask. Keep your voices down. You'll regret it. <coughs> What's the matter? Steady, you <coughs> You're going to take a little nap. <coughs> uh, you went out nicely, young lady. You... <coughs> yeah, that's it. Stay right down here. All right, Cato. You can come in now. They made no noise. Yeah, that was the big gamble. But I guess they've grown so accustomed to keeping quiet back here that they did it subconsciously. How's that? Who won? Very well. Hurry and get it set on that machine. Yes, sir. Now, work at that. Ah, let me see. Oh, there's a good place to hide. There is. Have the car ready right outside the window? Yes, sir. What time is it now? Ten o'clock. We've got to handle things just right. Stop the machine. If it is recognized by any one of you, please speak softly and address it by name. Concentrate, my friends. Concentrate. No, for it. We must all concentrate. There seems to be a disturbing influence among us. Is there someone called Lucian? That's me. Concentrate, my dear. Concentrate. Do you speak from the hereafter? I speak to someone called Lucia. Vincent. Vincent, is that you? You wish to ask? Me something? Something is wrong. Yes. Yes, tell me, dear. Are you happy? Yes, Lucian. I am happy. Before you left, I never knew. Was there any pain? Did you suffer, dear? There was no pain. We miss you so much. Lucia, there is one thing you must do. Yes. Yes, tell me. It concerns money. Yes. Yes? You must invest your insurance. Take it from the bank and invest it. But I don't... Hear quite... me, Lucia. A good investment house. The Gurney Sanders. What? Concentrate, please. Do not disturb the spell. I remember the name. Vincent, tell me. Tell me a little more. Vincent, I can't see you now. Tell me a little more. Vincent! Concentrate. Concentrate, my friends. Do not break the spell. Someone whose name is Elizabeth. That's my name. Elizabeth, your brother sends you word through me. Yes, yes, my brother. Where is he? He couldn't come. He sends you word. Do not trust any but the firm of Gurney Sanders with your investment. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. My brother was always afraid I'd... I can do no more. I can do no more tonight. There is a disturbing influence here. The seance has ended. I am not well. Please, the lights. Another time. But please, now, go. I want to talk to Vincent again. Another time. Another time, please. My brother. Can I get more word from my brother? Another time, I tell you. Go, get out, leave me. I am not well. The Roger turned up the lights and the amazed people were hurriedly sent from the luxurious room. All but Abbott, who remained behind until the others had gone. And then... You dirty double-crossing crook. It's a good thing I came here tonight. Abbott, believe me, there was something wrong. I don't know what happened to Greer. I can tell you what happened to Greer. You decided to play along with that Gurney Sanders firm, huh? I got the tip-off on that, Roger. That's why I came here tonight. You're crazy, I tell you. Oh, no, I'm not. You're the one that's crazy to think you could put something like that over on me. Maybe you thought my office wasn't swank enough for the society swells you had here, huh? No, no. You had Greer all primed to give that stuff out. Then when you saw me, you didn't get a chance to change the instructions. It isn't true. Oh, yes, it is. I'm not a blind fool, you know, Roger. Well, don't get the idea you can double-cross me. All right, you blustering idiot. Just what do you propose to do? I'm going to smash you. Oh, no, you're not. Maybe you're the one that took that picture the other night. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you thought a photograph of one of the ghosts would smash me. Well, let me tell you this. I know the law, and I've stayed inside the law. And that's more than you have done. Oh, is it? Yes, it is. You open your mouth and I'll send you to jail. You can't do it. Oh, yes, I can. 
There have been plenty of people who have gone to your place and bought worthless stock. There have been a lot of others that have bought stock from you and been told the stock went down. That what they bought on margin was wiped out. I happen to know, Abbott, that you never bought the stock at all. You just pocketed the dough. Well, don't get any foolish ideas about trying to make trouble for me. You can't double-cross me and get away with it. Who's that? How do I know? Where is Greer? You can ask him. I didn't try to double-cross you, Abbott. Greer, where are you? Answer the door. I'll go myself. We'll continue this discussion a little later, Riser. I'm not through by any means. Where's he at? Stand aside. Let's go through the place. Police, what's the meaning of this? What do you want here? Where's the Green Hornet? The Green Hornet? I know nothing about the Green Hornet. He's hiding out here someplace. I just got the phone call a little while ago and we come right over. It's too bad he didn't do something about you two rats before he skipped out. He's probably gone by this time. Whoever called you is mistaken. There was no phone call from here and the Green Hornet has not been here. And we don't want you cops around. Now clear out. What are you doing here, Abbott? Uh, I am reading his palm. You think fast on your feet, don't you, Roger? Let's have a look behind there. One moment, officer. Maybe you've heard that a warrant is required before you can search a man's home. You know all the laws, don't you? Sufficient of them. That's why I came here tonight, Joe. Someone in there. Come on. That's my voice. Let's go see. Maybe you thought my office wasn't swank enough. You two talk. It's a frame-up. Shut up. Let's listen. Greer all primed to give that stuff out. Then when you saw me, you didn't get a chance to change the instructions. It isn't true. Oh, yes. Let me out of here. Turn that thing off. Quiet, Roger. Looks like we got the goods on you at last. Let me go. Let me get out of here. No, you don't. Not so fast. That record will hold in court. Hang on to these two. We're taking you both in and that record as well. No, no. It's a frame-up, I tell you. You can't do it. Let me go. This intrusion. You have no warrant. We're taking you guys in without a warrant. Take that record along. Who did it? Who did it? Hey, look over there. Those two on the floor. Holy mackerel. What's happened to them? It's Greer. Your helpers. I knew there was something wrong. I told you, Abbott. I told you that Greer wasn't the one who appeared. They're alive, all right. Just knocked out. Yeah. We better call the boys and have the wagon sent over. This thing's bigger than we thought. Yeah, take that record so we don't lose that. I've got it. And hey, holy cats, look at this. I get it now. We were sent over here to get the Green Hornet. Okay. Look what's on the record. The mark of the Green Hornet. There he goes. He's outside. He sneaked out this window. Boys, I'd say offhand the Hornet framed this whole thing. I told you we were framed. It won't hold in court. Oh, yes. This will hold in court, Raja. And for once in his life, The Green Hornet's done a good turn for the police department. copyrighted feature of the Green Hornet Incorporated.